Shalom, Rastafari. Greetings, Ine Ras Yadinos Tefari Neng. We're going to now get into Jah's great invitation. This is taken from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to verse 30. Now, no doubt you all recall and remember his imperial majesty quotes this particular area of scripture where he speaks on um, Ethiopia, the Bible, the Word, and um, his faith in the Son of God, Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he quotes Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, where Yeshua says, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then his imperial majesty says after that in the speech where he speaks about Ethiopia, the Bible, the Word, and um, the great invitation, he says, who can resist an invitation so full of compassion? And, and, and that particular speech, which, which I think is an undated speech, we have it elsewhere, and, and you could, uh, forgive I, we couldn't um, get it in, in time to, to quote it, but we, we know that particular part um, um, by heart. You know what I'm saying? In other words, we committed that to I and I memory because it was a meditation. So when we talk, talk about meditation, you know what I'm saying? Also, when we talk, talk about mantras, in other words, certain psychic protection of mind that is based on the teaching of his majesty and the testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach. And this word right here is, is, is one in particular. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Who can resist an invitation so full of compassion? And he leaves that question there. And I can testify that upon reading that for myself, and meditating on that, it, 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 it challenged me because I and I hail Rastafari, His Majesty. At, at, at this particular time, years ago, when I was meditating on the, these words, and it, it inspired me to, to go to the Bible and, and, to, and, to, and to look at that. And in fact, His Majesty's teaching. I must say is his word, the entrance of that word giveth light. You know, and his anatinim um uh astawai yoch yadarga and 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 it makes children, infants, even little children and, and newborns um, it makes them intelligent ones. It makes them intelligent ones, or in King James speaks of understanding, and I Rastafari, we say overstand. Now, this particular message of Yeshua here in Matthew chapter 11 at verse 28 is said to be a new message of Yeshua. It's not the kingdom. It's not governmental. In other words, what we're discussing here, it is not, this right here is not federation, it's not UN, it's not governmental. This is the, but, but we do, there is a kingdom level to Rastafari, but discipleship is not this, I want you to understand. It's not the kingdom in that sense of governmental, but it's personal discipleship. And when we look at the preamble to the Ethiopian World Federation, Constitution and bylaws, and we want to heal up Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. You understand this, this, uh, this uh, Arbenia, this this patriot, this faithful brother, this this one who was sent to us. You understand who brought this message to us, who brought this this inheritance. You understand this this great inheritance restored to us our nationality as Ethiopians, you understand, and, and, and our right and access, you understand, our connection, official connection, brought us once again into the family of nations. You see, because a Negro, a black or a colored, an NBC, or a Smith, Jones, and Johnson is not on the level of, 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 
of the nations is, is, is not on the level of, of nationality. Is, is, is an artificial person, is a, is a corporate person, you understand, is a made-up person, is basically another form of a slave. And the worst kind of a slave, that a slave thinks he's free because he was, quote, emancipated. But emancipation means to legally to make over as property. Uh, etymologically, it means to release from the hand. It's like slave master had the niggas in the hand. And then the federal government said, release them into my hand. And there's a whole bunch of other um, 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 adhesion contracts, you know what I'm saying, that have been placed on us because of a lack of knowledge, you know what I'm saying, of law, and because of a lack of knowledge of who we are, where we're from, and what is the scriptural prophecy. Basically, it's speaking about John's word, but here we have an opportunity. We have John's great invitation, Yeshua's great invitation. And here in the Constitution book, the preamble, it says, we, the black peoples of the world, in order to affect unity. We say, why are we all divided? Why aren't we like the Jews? And so forth and so on. You see, whenever niggers, Negroes say that, you know, a lot of Negroes will say we should, we should be like the Jews. You understand? And, 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 and that is almost a, 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 an ironic, painful laugh, to even laugh at that, because we are. You understand? We are the true Hebrews, the black Jew. You understand? The Judadeos, the, the Ethiopicum um, prolem. You know what I'm saying? As Tacitus said, that the, the Jews that he saw were of the race of the Ethiopians. Amos 9 and 7 says, Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians? Unto me, O children of Israel. And the true children of Israel would experience exactly what the lost sheep, black people, Negroes, blacks, and colored NBCs have experienced in the Americas and the Caribbean. But here it says, we, the black peoples of the world, because in that NBC mix, the best, basically, jump point to nationality is the recognition, at least, of black. But that's a far lower level. You know what I'm saying? To our true race as Hebrews or our nationality as Ethiopians. You know what I'm saying? We, the black peoples of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self determination, to secure justice. You hear Negroes talking about no justice, no peace. But see, you cannot get justice from the one who has been so unjust, you understand, to you for 400 plus years. See, that's the big scheme right there. So when you see um, and read um, uh, Genesis chapter 15, where it talks about um, um, you shall be a, a stranger in a land that's not yours, and after 400 years shall come out of great substance, but the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. The iniquity now of the Amorites in the modern um, revelation of it is the whole legal system you know what I'm saying? It's this whole legal system and the ignorance that we have that we're not, we shouldn't be proud about the 13th and 14th Amendment. That is for one who has no nationality. That's for artificial people. You know what I'm saying? That's for art. So when you wonder why are Negroes changing, you know, Negroes have become almost like, I mean, I mean you see some things among Negroes, blacks, the colors, the Smiths, the Jones, and the Johnson, and you like, I mean, does somebody make, I mean, are you serious? Are you for real? That's why you hear Negroes say that so much. Are you for real, yo? You know what I'm saying? None of y'all are for real. All y'all are artificial people. You know what I'm saying? Carrying around European names. You are property of Europeans, and you don't understand that makes you a ward of the state. You know what I'm saying? You're not even on a, so when some talk about, well, blacks need to go back to Africa. No, first they need to recognize who they are. You know what I'm saying? First, they have to recognize the artificiality of their present so-called conditionality or status. Now, here it tells us to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage. So Ethiopia is our heritage, yes, but it's our divine heritage. So this right here bears witness to what we have in the prophets, the Hebrew prophets, the so-called minor prophets, Amos 9 and Seven. And we do hereby establish and ordain this constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. I mentioned this 
though this is this is kingdom, this is government, I mention this because in the preamble, it's basically saying first things first. You have to recognize the divine heritage. You know, and this is this is not whatever you if you're thinking there's anything other than our divine heritage, if it's anything other than living within covenant, the Kal Kidan, living within the contract and preserving our birthright. You see, you have to reclaim your birthright, but you can't reclaim your birthright, you know what I'm saying, with a European name, with slave masters and slave masters descendants name. You can't do it by saying that I'm a Negro, black, or colored, you know, and, and, and think you're going to be taken seriously, you know what I'm saying, in the eyes of the nations. All nations look at this Negro, black, and colored people, and, and, and they are and, and, and they're, they're amazed. I mean, I mean, look at this people. I mean, what's, you know, they're amazed at our situation. And even we ourselves say, how come this, all this is happening to us unlike anybody else? If you were to read and study and accept the truth of the Bible and your true lost found, your true lost found identity, you recognize that Jah said it already. Now, after all of that judgment and tribulation, 400 plus years, our kinsman redeemer, Kedemawi Hala Salati, coming forward, visiting all nations, sending to us this key. You understand? Know and, and, and other keys in his utterances and in his works for I and I. We have to learn these things and build up on it. Therefore, discipleship is important. Now, what we had left off before, we talked about the four um, different responses to the word and the four types of people, you know, the four different types. Now, the, 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 the fourth group or the fruitful response, no doubt you recall the fruitful response was the Bani Ha Elohim, or were the sons of God? You know what I'm saying? The fruitful response. So if one now has recognized that, you know what I'm saying? If one now recognized that, you know what I'm saying? That's speaking about the children now. That's speaking about the disciples. It's speaking about these who now re hear the word and comprehend that it. This means they, they have an intelligence. They hear the word, but there's an intelligence attached with that hearing of the word so they can see the vision and they can recognize the operation of the word. Now, scripturally speaking, mm -hmm. scripturally speaking, let's just check 18 and 19 years. Yeah. Scripturally speaking, right, children, because this is the key even from what we were speaking on um, Psalms chapter, uh, Psalms 119, verse uh, 130. In the King James, it doesn't mention the children, all it mentions the simple. The simple are the hitanat, the, the little children. But children equals works, right? Wisdom equals that, 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 that mother or begetter. Now, how do we know this? When you look at Matthew 18, right, look at Matthew 18 and 19, right, 18 and 19, um, verse 19 in particular, he says, but wisdom is justified of her children, of her children. You know what it says in Proverbs 1 and 8, um, my child, my son, hear the instruction of your father, forsake not the law of thy mother. Write that down. That's Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. So we have to hear, we have to shimma, shimma, right, the instruction of our father and not to forsake or leave the law of our mother, which is Torah, because it's through that law of our mother that wisdom comes about. And it says that wisdom is justified, is made right or righteous of her children. Now, the great invitation, it extends to all. It extends to the lost sheeple, the so-called conscious, conscious crowd, the awakened ones. It extends to even the demoniacs, you understand? But now it's the sons of God. You see, it's the sons of God now who respond to this great invitation. 
to John's great invitation. Come to me, all ye that, what? That labor and are heavy laden. You understand? That labor and are heavy laden. We have burdens. You understand? In the world. You understand? In this life. You understand? We labor. We work and are, are heavy laden. You know what I'm saying? Psychically, spiritually, psychically, and physically. But he says that he will give us rest. And he says, take my yoke. Right? Take my yoke. Now, here's the thing that we need to understand about this. This is threefold. Right? I want to put the children equal the works. You understand? Are justified of her works. Wisdom is justified of her works. Right? Um, of her children. But wisdom is justified of her children. You understand? And, and, and now the children are the sons of God who do Jah's work. Who complete, we are those who are to complete the work of the King of Kings in the earth in the testimony of Yeshua Ha Moshiach. But in order to do it, we need to be instructed, thus, discipleship. So, this area, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, it is speaking squarely on discipleship, and it's threefold. The first part of it. Let's do this right here. The first part of discipleship, now we have to become children. He says be as what? Children again. Because if you're not as children again, if you don't become as children again, as little children again, how can you be instructed? How can you be, be um, 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 matured, guided into that? You know what I'm saying? You'll be like that novice that, that um, Paul speaks of, you know what I'm saying, who pride will puff up. You know what I'm saying? Because there's that knowledge puffs up. Knowledge itself, just having a bunch of facts and figures, and somebody else said, wow, where well, you know that? That could puff you up. You understand? But it's the wisdom that's important. You see, so we touch on knowledge being important, and knowledge is important. But we're showing you how each step is important, but not to get stuck there or stop there or make an idol out of something in your imagination, but to continue to follow the word and study the word because this extends to all and it's applicable to all who would do as Christ says, if any man seeks to do the what will, but he has to learn, well, what is that will? So the will is, right, to come, right, to come and receive, right, and this is the key word, Come and receive salvation. Basically, come and receive Madan. Come and Kabbalah, Kebele, Madan. Now, it's interesting, salvation. You see Paul talk about um, we have to work out our salvation. But we're, we're saved by grace. You see, it's a gracious thing if we're able to receive this and, 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 and be saved and, and come into that grace. You understand? Coming to that grace, that means that we are guilty, you understand? And, and we're deserving of heavy punishment according to his word. All of us, all of humanity, but especially us as the lost sheep, when we recognize who we are and recognize our high calling and how we were in-laws, but we became outlaws because of our disobedience and and the generations would, would go through the slavery and the persecution that we have gone through. Now, salvation also needs to be interpreted as preservation. Preservation, that's what salvation is. Because those who don't gain salvation, the word says they perish. But those who gain salvation, they gain preservation, right? They gain preservation to be preserved, right? Secondly, you know, a lot of folks, they talk about saving the earth, preserving this and preserving that. But what about humanity? Who is speaking about preserving humanity that was created in his image and after his likeness? Only the faithful, only the elect are speaking on this and, and preaching on this. But this we must do. This is the will. So we're doing that, and through doing, we learn. And as our conscience um, dictates or, or guides us, we share this with others so that they may learn and, and, and actualize it so they can then fellowship. You see, there's much work for us to do. Many ones say, well, bro, what do you need done? Let me know. The main thing we need done is for ones to, 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 to get disciple, to get disciple, to, to really begin to know this 
for themselves, the basic principles, the process, and then to go about to actualize it when one has a good, when you have a good understanding. You always have a good understanding. Secondly, is to learn in discipleship. To learn. Now, when, when it says right here, to come and receive, you must understand this spiritually. It's not saying, well, go to say Ethiopia or Jerusalem or any holy or sacred site. You know what I'm saying? But to come into the presence of God in the innermost of your inner being. This is why Christ says in, in the earlier chapters of the discipleship, he says, go in your closet to pray. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, go in the quiet place to, 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 to pray. You see Christ's example even going in the wilderness or going out on the, on the boat or separating himself to meditate, to pray. You understand? Know to ground himself. You, you know, that is very, very important to to I and I growth um to learn in right discipleship right discipleship we could all say to learn in discipline right to learn in discipline you understand to learn being disciplined not to do what thou wilt but to do our to learn of our father's will and to do it thirdly is to serve Right, to serve in yoke, right, to serve in yoke, right, with Adoni or Adonai, to serve in yoke with the master, with Yeshua, to serve in yoke. Where do we get that from? Look at the next verse, 11 and 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So it's for us to learn of Yeshua, to learn of Jesus Christ, to learn of our black Lord and Savior, to learn of him, to learn his word, his testimony. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. Now that's deep. You shall find a rest. It reminds me of the 23rd Psalm, where it says that he restores our what soul, for what his name's sake. So you see that link with John where it speaks about to those who have faith on his name, does he give them the spiritual authority, right? Now, what is the yoke? What is the yoke in this sense? Verse 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. To so say the burden is not a heavy, uh, a heavy load. It's not a heavy load like slave masses yoke. If we would serve the Mashiach, the Mashiach, like we serve Masa, look at how those sound even kind of similar, like light and light. But this burden here is saying the burden is not a heavy thing. That means it's not a heavy yoke. But what is the yoke? The yoke, right, the yoke, we're not talking about the yoke of the egg or nothing, but the yoke, right, equals instruction, instruction, right, which is under discipline, in spirit and in truth. Remember, these are these principles. Remember these principles, in spirit and in truth. So this yoke, okay, let me give you an example, because he, he's, he's, he's saying the word yoke, and in that day, in that time, the people were well familiar with yoking up, you know, like animals, how you would yoke uh, a, a bull, you understand, um, to plow or an ox or whatnot to plow, you know, a piece of land, or how you would um, yoke up a horse or, or any other kind of, you know, animals. Compare that with what James talked about, how all sort of beasts have been tamed, but man has very great difficulty in taming his tongue because he doesn't observe his, his, his word. But Christ teaches us that there's destiny in word. That's why he, at a basic discipleship teaching, let your awol be awol, which will say yes, and your idelum idelum. Awol abet, idelum abet. Yes, sir, no, sir, bamarinya, right? Um, now, here, let, let's get to this part right here. Here, 
um, where, okay, where are we? Okay, come unto me, all ye that, all ye that uh, labor and are heavy laden. And he says, um, Enanta, Enanta de Kamoch, Enanta de Kamoch, Shekmachu, Ye Kabada Hulu, what an enu, a name Asara Fachu Hallo, Ken Berain Belayachu, Teshekamu, Kanema Tamaru, Ene, Ye Wah Belibim to Hoot Nenna. Len of Sachu, who left Tagenya Lachu, Ken Bere, Lizib, Shekmema, Elila, no winna. Now it's interesting because once again, we tell you, we told you this before, but sometimes you read King James and they have plurals, like a plural, more than one where there should be one. Like, for example, Le Misale, for example, we have verse 29. In verse 29, it says, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But Marinya, it says, le nefsachuhum irest taginyalachu. Le nefsachuhum, le nefsachuhum. Le nefsachuhum. It's one soul. It's saying that we all have one soul. That's the very interesting um, that's a theological concept, but there must be a process in it. There must, first of all, be a consciousness that King James saying souls, plural, is wrong. Because the Ethiopic, the pure language, tells us, Le nefsachuhum erestagenyalachu. Le nefsachuhum. Achu, your nefs. It don't say, Le nefsachuhum. If it's a le nesso chachu whom, then it will be plural. Or bizu. You know what I'm saying? Here is net Allah. Net Allah, no. Bizu idelem. It's not plural. It's not your souls. So it's saying that the disciples have one soul. Now the question is, what is soul? And how do you define? So, like in a discipleship, in a reasoning, if one said soul, we said, how do you define soul? In other words, not in, just in Amharic, but give me an idea in English to, to find out whether one comprehends what this is. Because we might say the word soul, and we think, you know, we have a very fuzzy idea. Remember we began off speaking about science, conscience, with knowing. So science is knowledge or knowing. You understand? So we have to know the truth. You understand? Know the truth. When we know the truth, that's what sets us free because with that knowledge of truth, we can walk in truth. You know what I'm saying? We can walk in the way, the truth, and the life. So now this right here concerning the great invitation is very, very important. Now there are other layers to this particular teaching, but this would be the, the basic foundation. The one, two, three. Let's go over this. Firstly, to come and receive salvation, right? To come and receive salvation. Notice it says, Ananta Dekamoch. That means you all who are, who are weak ones. Shekmachu. You know what I'm saying? Shekmachu. Yekabadahulu. You know what I'm saying? Um... Ones who are burdened, your, your burden, you know what I'm saying, all, all, all your heavy burden, what are in they new, bring it to I. Yeshua says, bring these heavy, now, on what level is he speaking? Is he speaking that if you're carrying, you know, like a big piano to bring it to him? No. He's speaking about, first of all, the spiritual, you know what I'm saying, and the psychical. You know what I'm saying? The spiritual and the psychical. Remember, remember, man was made in the image and after the likeness. Therefore, man is a tripartite being. This is why we know that the triune God is the true God and the one God, which is the triune God. You know what I'm saying? The God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, because we are the reflection and we have spirit, soul, and body. 
spirit, soul, and body. So Christ is speaking, if we put it in order, with the spirit on top and the soul like moaning in the middle, the soul is in the middle. You see, the soul. But what is the soul? The Greeks say, in the Septuagint, the Greeks say it is, it is suke. Modern man, modern people today say psyche. Psyche. So I'm sure you heard about psyche, psychological, psych. You understand? But what is psych? They define psych as the mind. Interesting that they define it as the mind, but it also has the meaning of, of um, thought and feeling and emotion. That aspect of us is our soul. You understand? That aspect of our being is our soul, and it's clear and evident that Yeshua is speaking directly to that state in the disciples. Not just the disciples of that time, but the disciples of this time. You understand? So when one say, yes, I seek discipleship, this is why we're teaching this, because this is the very same thing that we had to find when we said, where will we begin? How do we begin? Like, you know, the Bible's a big book. You understand? But how do we gain intelligence of it? You understand? And really see it for what it is and how there are different elements or principles or teachings contained and how do they all fit together? You understand? How do they all fit together? So here is definitely a clear area where he is inviting to personal discipleship. He's not speaking about the issues of being the king, though people were looking for Messiah king, for the Mashi Malak, or the Mashi, you know, the Christos Negus, or Christ in his kingly character. But that was not to be at that time. Yet that was fulfilled in the time of Moa and Bessa Zaim and Negeta Yehuda, Kedamawi, Haila Salase, Siyuma Egeziavi, Her Negus and Neges, Zaitopia. That was fulfilled in the visitation of the King of Kings up until the great transgression, the rebellion against the King of Kings by the careless Ethiopians at home and abroad. Because we as Ethiopians, we're not exempt from what happened, even though it happened way over there. Our forefathers are not exempt either. Because whether we want to say it connects with us or not, we are suffering the consequences. You, you, you see, we're suffering the consequences. We're, we're seeking to get out of this inertia of the movement. You know, and different ones have tried different ways, so forth and so on. You know, it reminds me of the no response, the emotional response, the worldly response. Now we recognize this is the fruitful response. This is our divine heritage. We have to learn it and really meditate and get the logicalness of it and then put it into application. You understand? And all these seeming barriers, lacks, wants, tribulate, all this will clear. It'll be like the Red Sea will part. You understand? And then the true exodus can come about, and then we can find home. You understand? Find home. Because first we'll find home. You understand? Because we'll find, you understand, the kingdom, you understand, is within. But in order to access it, it must be in Yeshua. It must be in his word, because his word is the key. You understand? But not just to hear the word, be a forgetful hearer of the word, but to be one who hears it and overstands it or has intelligence of it or comprehends it, you understand, in spirit and in truth. So he says, And he will cause you all, he will cause us to rest. You see, because there is a certain restlessness outside of the spirit and the truth of his word living living in our trifold being, living in our spirit, our soul, and our body, individually and collectively. You understand the rat race and everything else that we have to deal with on all the different levels that each individual has to. What you need is spiritual groundation. You understand one needs spiritual groundation to, first of all, recognize what is what. 
Because otherwise, it's like, as Nazi teaches, when he says uh, it's like a, a rudderless ship, is at the mercy of the wind and the waves, and it goes wherever. And should there happen rocks, it crashes up against rocks, and it'd be like it never existed. And we can see testimonies of many ones and ones who are like that, that ship, you understand? That ship that was at the mercy of the waves and the wind. You understand? Because it didn't have any, any, any guidance, any Mary. It needed a Mary. It needed guidance. So Yeshua, he is our teacher. Christ is our teacher. And I know many ones say that, give thanks for the teacher now that I have taught. I'm, I'm like an instructor. I'm like a co-teacher uh, uh, aside, along with Christ. And so are you all to be as well. Because it's a real works for I and to do. And we are well beyond the I and I capacity. And many those who are co-laboring with us, we're, we're working at capacity and beyond. You know what I'm saying? And I remember the, the, the word where Christ says, um, pray that laborers, you know what I'm saying, would be sent into the vineyard. You know what I'm saying? And, they, and, 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 and there will be. And, and we're confident of that because many have already responded. You know what I'm saying? And first of all, we know it's in the word. We're just doing our part, you know what I'm saying, and encouraging you all to do your part. And the discipleship part is here it goes, to come and receive salvation. This is a matter in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. To come in the spiritual sense of the idea, not to any mundane or worldly place, but to come to a spiritual recognition. And when you do, you'll be able to Kabbalah, receive, that's the active word, to Kabbalah, salvation, which is Madan, which is Bamarinya is Madan, or Medhanit, Medan. It's interesting because Madan and Medin, Medin means immunity. That's interesting because if you get immunity, what do you get immunity from? You get immunity from prosecution, right? So a court can give somebody immunity in order for them to testify. And if somebody gets immunity, you, you, you don't know they must have done something that by the law they could be judged on. You know what I'm saying? But because they received immunity, they are exempt or protected from prosecution. And this is exactly what salvation is if you want to understand that aspect of salvation to better grasp the real spiritual um, magnitude of this when you look at that same word and the cognate words meaning immunity or preservation, preservation. You have to receive immunity, to Kabbalah immunity. You're immune from the prosecution, you understand, being born in a sinful world and being guilty to some degree or another more or less as everyone else is. So all have fallen short, you understand. But now is Salvation now is the hour of salvation. Secondly, to learn. You notice that to learn. There's no such thing in that sense as a stupid so-called follower of Christ, of the true Christ. There's no such thing as that because it's about learning. You understand? And when you look at the history of Christianity, even among the Gentiles, the best thing that the Gentiles ever had, and still the European, the Anglo, um, Saxon, white, Protestant, European, the best thing they ever had was the Bible. That was the best thing they ever had. That's what really lifted them out of the caves and, and made them a, a, great, a great nation, a great people, a multitude, a company of nations, the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? John is not partial. You know what I'm saying? He's not partial. We're just speaking the reality of it. You know what I'm saying? We're speaking the reality, not just condemning just because, you know, we... You see, that's when you're still at that lower level. When you come into discipleship, you have to come to the higher spiritual understanding because just compare and contrast Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to verse 23. And then say, well, which, which group am I? Am I the one by the wayside, and am I the one on the stony ground, or am I the one among the thorns? Which, which one? Or am I the fruitful ground? The only way you can have fruitful ground, and, and, and let's understand this parable, what Christ has embedded in these parables. 
the fruitful ground has to be cultivated. You see, and then we have the link with cultivate and culture. And just look at this um, this kingdom promise key right here in the Federation Constitution. And we want to share this with you right here where it says in Article 1, uh, Section 2A, to promote love well, under the aims and objects of the Ethiopian World Federation Corporate shall be to promote love and goodwill among Ethiopians at home and abroad and thereby to maintain the integrity and sovereignty or sovereignty of Ethiopia to disseminate the ancient Ethiopian culture. See, when we touch on the culture and, and this society is, is, is so focused on education and fine arts and the culture and encouraging others to co-partner with us and even encouraging others to follow their callings. But the main thing for us all, you know what I'm saying, is to be of one heart and one mind in Yeshua HaMoshiach to the glory of the King of Kings. And, and this means us living in, 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 in contract, living within the, the covenant and preserving our birthright, you know what I'm saying, and doing his will and being blessed thereby, you know what I'm saying, and reversing this whole trip, this whole curse, 400 plus year thing, you understand? It goes on to say, um, culture among its members to correct abuses, relieve oppression, and carve for ourselves and our posterity a destiny, which is a future, comparable with our idea of perfect manhood and God's purpose in creating us. So the whole context of the Federation is on a divine heritage. You know, it's on our divine heritage, scripture, Bible. We have to know our race as Hebrews, got to know our nationality as Ethiopians. You understand? We have to um, seek um, what do they call it? A uh, 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 redress. You understand? Redress and, and recourse. You understand? And, and get, get slave masters' name off of us and off of our children. You understand? If they're within our, our custody as it, as it legally so called is, we have to change these things. It's, it's very important, my people. You understand? Know and people say, well, it's difficult because different situations, but keep learning in discipleship. You know what I'm saying? Keep learning in discipleship because you'll find a way with every, with every like, tribulation, he provides a way out, a righteous, you understand? Uh, a righteous way out. You know what I'm saying? So in creating us that we may not only save ourselves from annihilation, from annihilation, this is serious, but call for ourselves a place in the sun, the S-U-N. In this endeavor, we determine to seek peace and pursue it, for it is the will. It is the will of God for man. Now, if you know your Bible, seek peace and pursue it is Psalms. That's Psalms right there. So it shows us the consciousness. You understand? It shows us the spiritual consciousness, the covenant, should we say, consciousness of Dr. Malaku, Amanu Obeyan, and those brothers and sisters, you understand, who cooperated with him in fulfilling prophecy. You understand, it's very, very important for I and I, you understand, to know that and to recognize that. And then we come to serving in that yoke, that kenber, you understand, of Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, and that yoke is instruction so we can serve. I mean, we can do the ministry. The work of ministry is the service. I get.